Welcome to the Lucatino Show, where we can learn to reimagine our lifestyle. Good morning. Today we're going to talk a little bit about your DNA. Your DNA, it's, it's relation with almost every single disease that exists out there. Your hair, your skin, the color of your eyes, pigmentation that may suddenly happen in your life, everything. Your DNA is the computer system of your body. It's the brain of every cell that you have. Trillions of cells, trillions of multiple computer systems working. Poor DNA health has every connection with almost every single disease, like I mentioned, from cancers to Alzheimer's to cardiovascular, kidney, liver, brain, anything that involves a cell. So come down to your gut health, obesity, fat gain, hormonal imbalances, anything that involves a cell <clears throat> involves your DNA. We all have genes, all of us. And I think it's about time that we stop blaming our genes for everything. For the longest time, people have said, oh, I have diabetes. Yep, it's genetic, it's hereditary. Uh, yes, there are, you know, three to 5% is what medical science tells us, you know, would be cases of very, very strong genes that no matter what you do, that gene may manifest into a condition because of that strong gene. But again, we also see that medical science is giving us ways today and possibilities on how you can overcome that rather than just succumb as a victim to you know, your gene and say, oh, it's happened and you know, my whole life is gonna go this particular way because you know, my, my mother had it and I have it and that's how it is. The problem with this kind of a mindset is you don't do anything. You, know, you just become a victim and you say it's genetic and you go on living your life forgetting that there are many, many possibilities and many, many changes that you can make to actually make this better. Because what about the people, who, parents, example, who have strong genes of cancer or diabetes or Alzheimer's, but their kids actually never get it. They grow up in the completely healthy adults and they don't get it at all. Uh, get it at all. So what about that? What's different in those particular cases? So, <clears throat> Like I was saying, in very few cases of genetic order, disorder, nothing can be done. Of course, you can make lifestyle changes, change the way you eat, eat for your DNA, eat for your genes, and you can make the condition better. I'm not gonna use the word cure or reverse, <clears throat> but we have to understand and believe that all of us, you, me, all of us listening to this, we have good genes and we have bad genes, and they can be turned on and turned off upregulated and downregulated, for better or for worse, by our lifestyle and environment. So this includes the food that we eat, the quantity, the time that we eat, the quality of food that we eat, the depth of our sleep, our movement, our exercise, our stress levels, exposure to toxins, the weather, sunlight, radiation that exists around us, your chronic inflammation, UV lights, ultra-processed and processed foods, many, many medications, smoking, passive smoking, tobacco, excessive alcohol, all of this. All of this influences the way these little computers in our cells work. Most cancers are related to shorter telomeres, and telomeres play a very important function in the protection and the aging and the longevity process of life. <clears throat> so, your telomeres, okay, are very, very important to maintain. If they start getting shorter very quickly because the cap at the top of it is damaged and it's exposed to everything we just spoke about, that's when we start aging faster, that's when our skin, our hair starts changing and our, um, our chances of getting deadly diseases also increase. Now, genes that cause cancer have the ability of causing cancer should be switched off or they should be downregulated. And the genes that have the ability to heal and repair should be upregulated, which means they should be turned on. And that's exactly what epigenetics is. Epi means environment. This shows us that our internal environment within us, which are our acid levels, how we feel, our hormonal health, everything, the state of us within us and the external environment around us, which could be your weather, exposure to pollution, sunlight, all of these things control our genes. And in most cases, we have control over most of our internal environment and most of our external environment. Sometimes you may not. You live in a city where the pollution levels are at the highest. Okay, you can't control that. To some extent you can, if you can leave the city, move away, but everyone can't do that. 
but there are other factors that we're going to talk about that you can control. So now, when it comes to DNA repair, it can get very, very complicated, but I'm going to simplify it for you. How can we create this favorable environment for our genes? First, by understanding what are the easiest ways to damage your DNA and put you in a vulnerable position to get seriously sick. One is smoking. Comes along with passive smoking. If you're around people who smoke all the time, you're inhaling it, you're sleeping in bed sheets that have absorbed, you know, smoke smell, or you're using the bathroom after someone who smoked in the bathroom, passive smoking. Tobacco, chewing, smoking, excessive drinking of alcohol, UV light exposure, being in the sun at the wrong time, radiation, too much of sunlight, sunbathing again at the wrong time, certain medical treatments, and consistent eating of junk food and food that creates inflammation, like your white sugars, your white flours, all of your ultra-processed foods, your high corn fructose syrup, and your refined oils. Reheating oils, deep frying in oils that have already been used, deep frying in oils that contain partially hydrogenated fats or, you know, yeah, trans fats as well. Besides that, what can work for us? Blood circulation, anything that stimulates your blood circulation is good for you. So we're talking about exercise. I'm talking about physical exercise that includes mobility, flexibility, anaerobic, which is weight bearing exercises like either lifting weights or your own body weight or using resistance bands, the practice of yoga asanas, dancing, hikes, walks in nature, running, swims, any kind of movement is great movement as long as you do it consistently and you respect recovery and rest. Which brings me to my next point, quality sleep. By far, this would be the most important for your DNA. All repair happens in your body in a state of complete rest, which would be while you're fast asleep, while you're resting. They're having the ability to induce relaxation in you by slowing down your breath when you're breathing too fast or during the day you find you're very stressed out, you sit down, close your eyes, take six deep breaths, slow inhales, slow exhales. All of this is great for your DNA. It sends a signal to your body that everything's fine and your body can go back to repair work, reducing inflammation, daily meditation, silence, relaxation, prayer, anything that works for you to reduce your stress and make you feel better. Just remember that cells heal in a state of complete rest. And your food plays a very, very important role. The foods that I'm calling out right now have been scientifically studied. It's an impact and correlation with your DNA health. Starting off with green tea, not necessarily in order. Green tea, you wanna make sure that it's a whole leaf, not the thin envelope tea bags that have tea dust and very few tea leaves. You wanna look at a great quality tea leaf for green tea. Matcha tea, beautiful. Matcha tea is way more powerful. If you have one cup of matcha tea, science tells us that it's equivalent to almost seven to 10 normal glasses of green tea. Then black tea isn't bad at all. Whole leaf again, whole leaf black tea, top quality. Lemon, if it suits you, fantastic food for DNA repair. Watercress, spinach, which is cooked. Tomato, which is cooked. Your crucifers like broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, arugula, radish, Broccoli sprouts are super, super powerful for your DNA. Your berries, all the berry family, blueberries, blackberries, strawberries, Indian gooseberries. Then you have your avocados, you have your dark chocolate, mainly cacao nibs, raw cacao nibs, a tablespoon every day, a teaspoon. It depends on you, but get this into your daily diet. Apples, because of the quercetin, because of the pectin, your raw onions and garlic, if you don't like them raw, you can gently saute them, cook them a little bit, may lose a little bit of its nutrients, but it's still good for you. All of your citrus fruit family, if it suits you. Walnuts, one of the most powerful nuts when it comes to your DNA. Resveratrol, resveratrol found in grapes, found in good, a good quality wine, uh, found in supplements if you need to supplement, and chlorella. So try to include at least two of these foods and beverages in your daily diet especially if you're exposed to any of these environmental factors or lifestyle factors that we discussed above that could be hurting your DNA. You know, this is great as a preventive tool and it's also great if you're already suffering from a disease, especially cancer, to have a protocol for repairing your DNA. 
So please understand that we live in a world today where we are against, up against so much of toxicity, bad lifestyle. That's why we need to put in all of this effort, extra effort to look after our body and health and help it and enable it and empower it to defend us and to heal us. Of course, always check with your doctor before you start everything else. But again, it comes down to that beautiful intelligence working in every cell of your body. Sometimes all we need to do is give your body that platform, that environment, so it can work its magic, harness that intelligence, so it can do its work. Someone has a cancer, your DNA computer programming has obviously been affected. Now, why? Why did that happen? What can I do to make sure that these computer programs continue to work the right way? Usually in a normal cell, in a healthy cell, if there's a virus or if there's anything like a cancerous cell that's starting to behave abnormally, the cell has a self-destructive <clears throat> mechanism called cell apoptosis, where it can kill itself. So it kills it along with the faulty virus program. And that's part of our immune system that's working for us all the time. But when it stops working for us, something obviously, obviously corrupted that self-destructive mechanism. And you know, that's related to your hormone function because your hormones are chemical messengers. They communicate with your immune factors, your interleukins, everything. All this intelligence is working together like an orchestra. And we have to provide the right platform for this orchestra to play the right way. And that's what we have to do. So we have to just look beyond the piece of paper that's telling us what to eat. We gotta look at our workout. Is it working for us? Our sleep quality, do you wake up feeling rested in the morning? How much of investment in your emotional self, your physical self? And that is the beauty of holistic medicine. That is the beauty of you being able to empower yourself to live the holistic way. I hope this helps you and your family. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, breathe deep. But remember, you care is all about you. Stay tuned for more. We're going to continue our journey learning, sharing, and evolving.